to go over chapter 22 services expansion correction and scientology today um, i'm going to read you that first chap uh, first um, paragraph of this chapter um, to orient you to what we're talking about you're now about to be introduced to the scientology leah doesn't want you to know and will not be able to tell you about everything she talks about may have happened sometime in the past but first it's twisted for ratings impact and second it's from 40 years ago when the religion was still forming and i'm sure some crazy people were working at the church and causing legitimate problems this is going to be the polar opposite of what you've heard and so you will have you will have to ensure that you are ready to hear about what has changed how it has occurred and has been corrected and how it has been worked to improve every inch of the religion <clears throat> Alrighty, perfect. So we're just going to go by, um, we're going to just skim by all of the, the points in this chapter. There are many pages to this chapter. Um, I will not read the whole entire chapter, that's for sure. So the first one is Golden Age of Knowledge. Okay, um, let me just go ahead and read this, this, this section's paragraph. It says, it all starts with the Golden Age of Knowledge, which culminated close to 30 years of research, archiving, and the correction of all written and recorded scriptures by the founder, L. Ron Hubbard. This meant dedicating over millions of hours, miles, and even consisting of hundreds of people to make an impact on this project. This was led by Mr. David Miscavige, leader of the Scientology religion, and was completed in 2010. This is what the leader of Scientology, um, of the Scientology religion, Mr. David Miscavige, has to say. Start of a quote. We are not speaking of corrected manuscripts, manuscripts, not newly verified manuscripts, and definitely not just repackaged. What we are speaking of is 100% an unadulterated source. End of quote. Source in Scientology is L. Ron Hubbard. It is the source of the, you know, the information, the, the scriptures, the data, the discoveries of Scientology and in Scientology, right? So Mr. Hubbard is the source of information, and over the years it was found people made changes to his research, some of it by accident, as in the case of typists and dictation transcription errors, and some much more sinister that changed the materials so they would not generate the positive results that Hubbard intended. Fixing this problem meant that all recorded and written words were confirmed all the way back to the original handwritten pages and the actual real-to-real -real audio recordings that 100% were by the founder, right, to verify that they were, in fact, what was said by the founder. This was started because Mr. Miscavige found actual alterations in the written words, transcripts, and even his policy letters. People had actually come into the religion and tried to alter what the founder had started, what well, was stated, to cause people harm using Scientology principles and thus causing people to distrust and brush off the principles as mistakenly useless. But they were not useless. They had only been altered by some people with the intent of infiltrating Scientology to start a demise or downfall. This is a statement by the Church of Scientology. It says, Mr. Miscavige announced not only a decade of milestone accomplishments, but the most monumental achievement in the history of the religion, completion of the 25-year program to recover, verify, and restore the scripture of the Scientology religion. The quarter-century endeavor that involved some 2 million man-hours to recover and make fully accessible all written and spoken words of L. Ron Hubbard constituted the ultimate guarantee for the permanency of Scientology itself, said Dave Miscavige. Elrond Hubbard initiated the program in 1984 to provide Scientologists the full legacy of his 50 years of research and discovery into the mind, spirit, and life. What followed were years of locating all manuscripts and recordings in cities where Mr. Hubbard wrote and lectured and the verification and restoration of those materials. Church of Scientology International. Um, you can read more about that. It is 
pretty massive in the church and the religion, right? Pretty, pretty massive. Um, you would, you would be failing on educating yourself if you didn't, if you weren't informed or weren't enlightened on what is in this book in regards to the golden age of knowledge. It did impact the religion in a really neat, really neat way. It also aided the expansion and um, effectiveness. Ideal organizations. The next phase that really got underway after Leah's departure, the Church of Scientology Ideal Organizations Project started in 2003. This project picked up while Golden Age of Knowledge was being worked on and released. This project meant that ideal, quote unquote, churches of Scientology would meet the standards of what the founders stated about Scientology, Dianetics, and their supported humanitarian efforts. Mr. Miscavige is the driving force of a movement now spanning the globe with ideal churches of Scientology. He set the direction for the acquisition, design, and planning of new churches, and in consequence, the horizons of Scientology are filled with scores of new churches in the making for the second decade of the century. That's a statement from the Church of Scientology. These churches would embody the ideal scene of Scientology principles and would be the entrance point for answers for the general public and for Scientologists internationally. You could walk into any of these organizations. There are over 70 now, uh, but there are way more churches than that. These are just what we're calling ideal organizations. Um, they set the ideal standard, right? So an ideal org is a church configured to provide the full services of the Scientology religion to its parishioners and to the community. Ideal encompasses both the physical facilities and the types of services ministered to parishioners and the community. These churches house extensive public information, multimedia displays describing all aspects of Dianetics and Scientology, founder L. Ron Hubbard, and the church's social betterment and community outreach programs. That's also a statement from the Church of Scientology. While Golden Age of Knowledge was being worked on, there were churches of this category opening in Johannesburg, South Africa, San Francisco, California, Madrid, Spain, and a few more. The church was absolutely focused on both projects, but one had more attention at the time. So based, based on that, I mean, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find ideal organizations um, in Dallas, Texas, Los Angeles, California, Los Gatos, California, Silicon Valley, San Fernando Valley, California, Stevens Creek, Phoenix, Arizona, Milan, Italy, Rome, Italy, Padova. Um, I mean, it's insane. We have so many different um, ideal churches around the world, and it's all to service the general public in answering their questions about Scientology, Dianetics, Aaron Hubbard, and the many humanitarian programs and initiatives the Church of Scientology supports around the globe. Um, since 2003, over 50 ideal churches have ar arisen across the planet, including those in the world's cultural capitals, the National Church of Scientology of Spain in Madrid's neighborhood of letters, the Church of Scientology of New York, just off of Times Square, the Church of Scientology of San Francisco, California, and the original historic Transamerica building, the Church of Scientology of London, England, located in the epicenter of the city, the Church of Scientology of Berlin, Germany, near the Brandenburg Gates, and the Church of Scientology of Moscow, Russia, located just a short distance from the Kremlin and Red Square. Over 30 new churches have been opened just since 2009. Remember, that's just since 2009. That does not include since 2003, when the first ideal Church of Scientology was to hit the planet. Anyway, that was a statement from the Church of Scientology. You're going to find out a lot more information about that when you read the chapter. Um, we're going to go on to expansion fundraising. Along with the efforts to recreate the church to the founders' expectations and fuel the expansion needed to make Scientology available around the world, fundraising efforts were started much like any church does to raise money. The fundraising on these projects is solely done as a charitable effort and parishioners willingly give these amounts necessary to open these amazingly standard organizations. Um, this is a statement from the church. 
Scientology does not have hundreds of years of accumulated wealth and property like other religions. It must make its what it must make its way in the world according to the economics of today's society. When one considers the cost of ministering even one hour of auditing, requiring extensively trained auditors, not to mention overhead costs of maintaining church premises, the necessity of donations becomes clear. Church Scientology International. I've personally been to numerous fundraising events um, by the church. We um, we do an incredible, incredible, incredible thing in, in society. Um, many of these fundraising events really support the community, all of them, really. Um, I think it was like the last event that I was at. I think we were fundraising for um, drug education in, a, in another country, and I was very, very, very happy about um, attending that and also supporting it because who doesn't want – youth to be educated on drugs and the effects of drugs so um they use the you know they we support the foundation for a drug-free world and we you know we donate so that they can get their booklets printed and their posters printed and their banners printed and t-shirts and all this all this other material and also to ensure that the volunteers can and will be able to um deliver these lectures and and these materials um smoothly and effectively so when I was there, you know, it was, you know, I, what is it? I really actually just donated what I, what I could. And that was, that was what it was. There were a lot of people that were like, Hey, I want to do more. <laughs> and it was really funny because the fundraiser um, really was just really pleased with the amount of support that was given to the church um, by the parishioners. And there were also a couple of people that weren't even parishioners of the church that did go ahead and drop donations in as well. It was really, really, it was really pleasing, and the money went straight to them, um, you know, straight to the to the efforts of drug education in that country, and um, it's been doing a really fantastic job. Now, I do want to say on ideal organizations fundraising, it's super interesting because. Um, I've heard I've heard stories of fundraising events happening in Greek Orthodox churches, right? And they're getting their new building and whatever. Um, there's a Greek Orthodox church that um, some some people in my family go to, and that that it's a beautiful church, huge, right? Um, they're trying to pay for the renovations of it, and they have fundraising events just like the Church of Scientology, where they literally just have. Um, this whole little event where they kind of go over some cool little neat things and give you some um, some more data on what this is all about, what it will do, give you some pictures, enlighten you all about it. And it's up to you if you want to support it. And um, what is it? Going to these going to these events, I've developed a, a sense of more um, well, a willingness to go out there and also help other religions. And also just fundraise in general for chari charitable organizations because it's really inspirational and um, really enlightening how everybody can come together for one purpose and it just gets done. You know, no, yeah. There's of course there's barriers and such, and um, you know we all get through those barriers, and it's super, it's super great, and it's very, very spiritual too to see that you can get through those on your own. And be able to just benefit your own religion and um, benefit the expansion of the religion, which is super great. That's what I'll say about that. And then what you probably have heard is you probably um, – you might have heard the effects of these fundraising events, right? What people have to say. Um, people that were – people that benefited from the church's donations, right? You have um, this guy, he's Tim, he's a drug educator, right? This is what he had to say about, um, you know, all the, my church's generosity. It says, the Scientologists let me use their chapel for my drug prevention seminar. I was looking for a venue for my congregation, and I found it. So he found it, and this was it. And we gave it to, we, we actually lended it to him for free, because who doesn't want drug education happening in their community? Uh, name one sane person that doesn't want that. I don't think you can. 
But um, that's just one of the people. But it's but you have to understand, fundraising is not the main part in, of the religion at all. It is not something that they focus on all of the time. Fundraising and donations are only a section of the religion to aid its expansion. Right? To, it's like one little, small, little point of a huge religion that has many different aspects that it goes over. You know, delivering that services, helping the humanitarian efforts, you know, volunteering, so many different so many different aspects. That's just one small aspect of it, you know? Um, you can read more about that. Now, you've probably heard of the International Association of Scientologists. This is an organization that you may have heard of. Um, or the International Association of Scientologists is an un unincorporated membership organization open to all Scientologists from all nations. The IS was formed in 1984 at a time when the religious freedom of Scientologists was in peril. Delegates from Scientology churches world over assembled at St. Hill Manor, Aaron Hubbard's home, from 1959 to 1966 in, um, in Sussex, um, England. A, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful manor. Look it up. Um, in recognition of the need to unite all Scientologists as an international body. To confirm their dedication toward the aims of Scientology, those first IS, IS delegates for, formulated and signed the Pledge to Mankind. So the purpose of the IS is now to unite, advance, support, and protect the Scientology religion and Scientologists in all parts of the world so as to achieve the aims of Scientology as originated by L. Ron Hubbard. That's by the Church of Scientology International. Um, you guys should read the rest. I don't want to read it all. Um, huge amounts of information. You're going to love it. Goes over the flag building. Goes over Golden Age Tech Phase Two and the services now. International Association of Scientologists. The whole shebang. Um, all in escaping Leah, and that was in Chapter 22. Um, get your copy at ExposingCrimes.com. Thanks so much, guys.